there guys and welcome welcome back to the channel right so we do have finally Balgrand season 5 details new metas and boy they look interesting there are a few more things that we need to take a look at but let's just go one by one point down of the list so first things first the new season season 5 starts at february the 8th so in five days from now on Wednesday, which will coincide with the release of all the other new content, new side events, new Thronebreaker EQ, ATC. And this time around, I will be streaming the start of Balgrounds uh, over Thronebreaker EQ or something like that. Uh, but as always, they will last uh, basically, no, actually, yeah, they will last uh, four weeks. So we're going to have four different metas in Gladius Circuit, one meta for victory track. The new addition is going to be em emotes, emotes. Starting in season five, players that make their way into Gladiator Circuit will get an exclusive emo emotes as a new cosmetic reward. Okay, that will be interesting to see how they implement that. Um, I don't think it's like the biggest of deals, but you know, it's neat, nice. Let's take a look at season five metas. So for victory track, we have two buffs. One is Blood in the Water. While the attacker is suffering from a debuff, the defender gains a passive fury granting 150% attack, lasting until all debuffs on the attacker expire. And then we have Long Distance Relationship. While close to a defender, the attacker gains a weakness debuff every 3 seconds, reducing attack by 10%. Staying far away from the defender causes these weakness debuffs. Weakness effects to gradually fall off. So this uh, is much less restrictive meta than the last time around with the power burn and armor ups, which basically means you can use virtually all of the champions in your deck. Obviously, there will be some that work better than others. For instance, uh, offensively, I suspect Kingpin is going to be doing quite an amazing job. Defensively, Void sounds like an absolute nightmare where whenever you are close to him, you get debuffs placed on you and you start to take damage. So it is going to be interesting how it works out. And also because it's weakness, you know, it'll probably prevent from the fights being too nuky, I hope. Because I'm definitely not a big fan of nuke matters. Then moving on to Gladiator Circuit. There is a third buff added to the two victory track buffs for week one, which is Insult to Injury, which reduces your uh, defensive ability accuracy by 30%, which is fair enough. Week two meta is quite interesting. Second wind damage reflection. Whenever the defender purifies or cleanses the debuff, they gain a damage reflection passive for six seconds, dealing back 25% of the damage dealt by the attacker. Power creep. Each time the defender purifies or cleanses the debuff, they gain a charge that permanently increases their combat power rate by 3%, up to 20. And ebb and flow knockdown. This is quite interesting as well, but I think for most cases will be fairly straightforward because as long as you make sure that your opponent does not have any debuffs when the ebb and flow protection will return and purify all the debuffs that they have, it shouldn't be too bad in kind of like generic circumstances, but it does look quite interesting with ebb and flow and everything that entails. Week three, there's tons of unstoppable. This is going to be quite a crazy one. So, buff 1, fight or flight. Every 12 seconds, the defender gains an unstoppable buff for 4 seconds. If the attacker is far away from the defender, when this triggers, the attacker gains unstoppable instead. Buff 2, muscle wizard. Whenever a mystic attacker knocks the defender down, the attacker has 100% chance to gain an unstoppable buff for 6 seconds. If the attacker was already unstoppable, they gain an indefinite fury buff, increasing attack rating by 50%. A maximum of four theories can be gained this way. And then the last one is persistent pressure. The defenders under the effect of unstoppable become stun immune. This includes unstoppable effects triggered outside this node. And every 15 seconds, the defender gains unstoppable for five seconds. The duration of this buff is reduced by half a second for each prowess buff or passive the attacker has. And it also has force of will. So this sounds like quite a crazy and messy node with uh, obviously emphasis on um, mystic champions and uh, will be interesting to see how it works out there seems to be quite a lot of timer watching involved at least two timers at all times plus any others from the champions themselves so it, it does sound like quite a, quite a crazy tricky meta 
and week four is arguably the craziest and this is going to be definitely a point of conversation for a lot of people because buff number one is rage one damage taken in a single hit is capped at a one percent of max health when damage cap is reached gain a fury buff upon reaching five fury buffs activated by rage attacks become unblockable ability accuracy modification doesn't affect this node so that's kind of scary then we have Misty Conditioning. Whenever the attacker attempts to remove a buff with a Nullify, Fate Seal, or Stagger, the chances of all future Nullify, Fate Seal, or Stagger effects are reduced by 20%. So that will hinder the Nullification Champions, which is going to be quite tricky. And we also have Polkadot Power, which automatically hinders majority of the champions in the game. The attacker gains no power from landing or receiving attacks. Instead, they are granted 12% of a power per second while the defender is suffering from a damaging debuff. So this node combination seems quite crazy because you obviously do want to find champions that inflict damage over time effects on their basic hits or heavies or something like that. At the same time, you need to play around the rage and unblockable. And yeah, it is going to be definitely very interesting. I scrolled through my roster and realized that about 75 percent of my rank 4 roster absolutely doesn't do anything on this node and just can't be used offensively at all basically so it will definitely be quite a quite an intense meta but uh, we'll see how it works out i have praised some metas in past and criticized others but when these metas actually arrive sometimes I was right, but quite often, you know, metas that I was dreading for turned out to be absolutely awesome. And metas that I thought I would enjoy, turns out I didn't. How it will look on this week four meta in the latest circuit, it's definitely worrisome. But uh, at the same time, I'm willing to give it a go. And uh, yeah, remember that everybody playing gets the same nodes. That means that... No matter how much hindered you are, your opponent is hindered to the same degree throughout every fight. But I do suspect that the scores in this meta will be significantly slower and lower. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely curious as to how this is going to work out. And I will be trying to release the MVP champion list and stuff like that for this. But uh, obviously, for the mo vast majority of the people, Victory Track Meta is the one that matters the most because it can stay up to an entire month for you if you do not ever finish the Victory Track. And then looking at Long Distance Relationship and Blood in the Water, I think it's fine. I don't think there is a massive level of difficulty involved with these nodes. I think it's uh, a way to make, number one, you know, having debuffs be more dangerous. And then number two, obviously, there will be some uh, natural slowdown in the fight finishing time because you can't just be like super aggro get five weaknesses or six weaknesses on you and hope to finish fight quickly so you do need to kind of like pace the fight and at the same time there will be some interesting uh, combinations of uh, champions defenders and attackers like i do suspect jabari panther will work quite well with the long distance relationship kingpin should work quite well with long distance relationship and you know arguably get even more powerful perhaps a handful of more champions and then on defense obviously we're gonna have champions like vision arcus potentially and void and a handful of others so it definitely will be quite curious to see how it works out but uh yeah wednesday uh 6 p.m uk time i definitely 1000 percent will be live i'm gonna build the deck and we're gonna try and start our climb up to gladiator circuit uh to get there within the first week and uh see what's what really uh now that battlegrounds are gone the game feels so empty i'm just happy that there are no longer uh, longer off season that it is going to be just the seven day off season and we are coming back on february the 8th which means five days from now which is not far at all we are all going to get a chance to get back in bgs let me know what you guys think about the nodes 
and I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about